Brisbane star recruit Charlie Austin plays in front of his home fans for the first time as they welcome Dwight York's Australia Cup champions, MacArthur FC, to town in the opening round of season 18 of the Isuzu Ute A-League. Welcome to Suncorp Stadium, the first time we have been here for an A-Leagues clash in more than two years as Brisbane Raw host MacArthur FC. You can see Jordan Holmes, he comes back between the posts after Macklin Freak played their entire Australia Cup campaign. He's recovered from wrist surgery in the preseason. And Jack Hingard as well. He was part of a Sri Lankan national team camp last month and he qualifies through his dad who was born in Colombo. So he'll bring that experience back into this Brisbane Raw side if he didn't need any more experience. For the Bulls, Dwight York makes two changes from the team that lifted the Australia Cup. Interestingly, Kieran Backus is replaced in the holding midfield role. Derry Skatardis comes in while target man Anthony Carter slots in at the top in place of Lockie Rose. Well, this is a chance for Brisbane Raw to really make a statement. MacArthur coming in as the side expected to get the job done. But the pressure still remains on Warren Moon from the outset, finishing second bottom last season. But what an opportunity this is for him to silence the doubters winning against the Australia Cup champions. And Dwight York, you can see him sitting there with Russell Latapi and the Manchester United legend. He had the perfect start to his managerial career, winning the Australia Cup last week. But now is the big test. Week in, week out against A-League men's opposition. So the Raw return home against the Cup Kings. And what a match this one shapes up to be. Can Charlie Austin drive Raw to three points in round one for the first time in seven years? Or can Daniel Arzani dazzle for MacArthur? Daniel McBrain? Well, it's down to Charlie Austin to finish anything that's put in a plate for him. And to be fair to Brisbane last season, there was a number of games where they created a lot more chances than their opposition, but they just didn't have a player in the middle that could put it away. And he is the man. If he is central in the box and they give him delivery, he should score goals. On the other hand, Dwight York has a plethora of attacking players at his disposal. And I think their mantra will be attack, attack, attack. Interestingly, Lockie Rose and Kieran Backus not in the starting lineup today, which is a little bit of a surprise for me. Austin on the chase. Curno came out right to the edge of his box. Brisbane fans were asking whether it was handled on the edge of it. Adam Kersey saying it wasn't, and he was in good position there. Well, he's got the Jamie Young radar from last night. It, down to the centimetre, perfect. In gets head up, Denzaki on the volley, Curto. Well... He had an indifferent season last year, Philip Curto, former A-League goalkeeper of the year. That's inside. That looked fair enough, but this... This is not a bad effort. I don't mind that. A little bit of inventiveness. It's tough tough to pull off that volley. No, there's nothing. That's fine. Armiento again. Acres of space on the left. Early ball, Austin! Sliding at the back post was Joe Knowles. What an early chance that was for the two new recruits up top for Brisbane. Well, I think we're seeing the makings here. The partnership could do well for Brisbane Raw. Armiento on the left. You look, look how deep he is, and he knows straight away. One touch forward, I'm going to put it into that area. I've got a guy who's scored nearly 300 goals in his career, 18 in the Premier League. I'm putting it there for him. Get on the end of it. He has at that time. Just couldn't quite find the direction on the finish. Armiento, one-on-one -on -one with Toure. Well, McGing by his side was the arm, and now the shot. Cannoned off to Silva. Austin goes down in the box. Well, a lot happened in a very short space of time. Armiento now saying that he was given a little bit of a tug. Well, we saw a goal disallowed last night, didn't we? In the Melbourne City Western United game. Where there was a little tiny touch in the back and it was called back. But your argument is last night, in that same position, it was a foul to deny a goal. Looks to have a bit of a headache 20 minutes in, Dwight York. Well, he doesn't look impressed, does he? You can see why. 
greatest opening 20 minutes of a season he would have liked to have seen. Armiento beats a couple. Austin rising. He's causing some real problems for the MacArthur back line, but unable to break through yet. And again, it's Armiento. He's having a great day on that left-hand side. Full of confidence, attacking his players. You see here, little dummy using his strength. Just brings it around. And every time he gets that ball with space, his first thought is get it around that penalty spot, around the six-yard area, get Austin or one of his teammates to attack it. And that's a striker's dream. Armiento, that time he was brought down. Tavila is the man to give away the free kick. And Armiento asking the question. Just to be careful, the MacArthur captain. It's always a problem when you get a, a yellow card so early in the game. You have to watch yourself. Yeah, that's a foul. It's a second yellow card. You're saying but maybe if they... he wasn't on a yellow, he might have got no, one. I don't think. I don't think so. O'Shea. Let's see where the eyes were looking. Back post. Tom Aldred. He wanted the corner, not forthcoming. But it's Brisbane. They're knocking loudest on the door in this first half. Well, let's be honest. It's been all all been Brisbane, hasn't it? And it was definitely was a corner. The aerial pinball finally stopped by De Silva and De Vila running away from Truen. Hardest touch too heavy. Chapman and Aldred at the back have started this match all right. If you take out that near disaster moments ago. It's been a confident start, but here is the opening. MacArthur were after Toure to Carter. He's missed an open goal. What an opportunity for the Bulls. Well, all he can do there is look at the linesman and hope that the flag has gone up. I'm not sure that it did, but it was great players. It fell there, driving run from Toure as he comes through and he fires it across. And I think it's harder to miss. I know he's stretching for that. It came quickly, is that It came quickly fair? and he is stretching. He just got his, the angle of his foot wrong. It just, as maybe by stretching, his angle of his foot has guided the ball up and over. Holmes is launching again, but powerful in the air. Tommy Uzcott, such a leader in this side. So maybe a final opportunity. Anthony Carter is down. This is a head clash between he and Tom Aldred. And both you would anticipate have pretty hard heads, especially Tom Aldred. And it looks as though it's Carter that's come off worse for wear. It was. Oh, that's a yeah. shocker. Especially with Carter not. Well, either neither of the neither of them saw the other one coming, did they? That's not what you like to see, and that would hurt. And that could do us for the first half of action if Anthony Carter is potentially unable to continue. And Adam Kersey does call half time. A sickening head clash right on the stroke of half time. And it was really a first half of frustration for both sides. Brisbane with a lot of half chances inside the opening half hour. MacArthur with two golden gilt edge chances in the 15 minutes before half time. But at the break, it's Brisbane Raw nil, MacArthur FC nil. Ulysses Davila having a chat there to Matt Miller, who is coming on in the second half for Jake McGing, replaced at half time. So this will be intriguing. Matt Miller back in the A-League men's competition, of course. He was with St Mirren in Scotland. Played the 12 matches in the top flight there last season. 
most recently in this competition with Newcastle and the Central Coast Mariners. So what can the 26-year-old add to this MacArthur side going forward? Because they didn't create too many chances in the first half. Brisbane Raw get us started. It was they who had the foot on the throat for the first half hour. And as was the case, Daniel McBreen, last season, they couldn't make those chances count. No, they haven't. They looked good. Had plenty of uh, field position and plenty of balls in the box as well. But as you say, Ben, just like last year, it's not ending with the ball in the back of the net. Nice to be a fly on the wall and hear what Warren Moon would have said to them. Chapman, his header is going to fall favourably for MacArthur to Silva. Sarmiento backtracking, but there's three raw men coming across. It's a tricky cross. Holmes looked a little bamboozled by it. Well, I, I think we all thought that was going out over the byline. Jordan Holmes looked like he was running to grab the ball, and all of a sudden he started backtracking quickly as it looked like it was going to drop in that back post area. First corner for the Bulls. Arzani. Arzani bursting into the box. Is there another corner on the way? No. Just the goal kick. But that's where Brisbane have to be very, very careful. Yeah, and that's where MacArthur want to see this man on the ball. Just on the edge of the box. Getting defenders on the back foot, driving into that area. Footballer of the year in that 17-18 A-League men's season. Just his 25th A-League men's match today, Daniel Arzani. Over those two seasons at Melbourne City. Skatardis. Passes a disappointing one. He was brought into the side for Kieran Backus. Jerry Skatardis, the championship winner with Western United. quite got going so far today but he's not the only man in MacArthur colors with that issue Arzani little dink over the top Carter with the volley point blank save from Jordan Holmes so frustrated Anthony Carter you could see he hit that sweet and now we're starting to see the warning signs from MacArthur yeah, the red lights are flashing. Davila with the strike. That more comfortable for Holmes. Down yeah, this left-hand side, again, little touch there is fantastic. And as the ball comes to the edge of the box, it's the first time that Anthony Carter has been away from Aldred in the match, I would say. When he finds that space, it's a great strike. And Jordan Holmes had to get down quickly. And then Aldred clears the, safe, the danger. But a couple of signs in this second half now that MacArthur are starting to find a little bit of combination going forward. Truen. Showing his array of skills, Kai Truen, in that field position today. He's got the ball tangled up and get it in front of Arzani. So we're about to see a substitution. And it's Craig Noon who is going to replace Daniel Arzani. And you can see Adam Kersey just saying to young Daniel, just go off that side of the pitch. And Craig Noon comes on. And you just wonder what kind of role he's going to play this year with the quality MacArthur have in the final third. Is it going to be bench cameos adding impact late? Well, I actually asked that question of Dwight York for the Australia Cup final. I said, will it be a rotation policy? Or will it be if you're performing, you do well? And he said he's been open with his players. If you go out there and do the business, you keep your spot. So they're all fighting week in, week out, every day at training to hold their own position in that starting 11. And we saw Craig Noon come on in that Australia Cup final and win the, the second penalty, which really won them the game. 
I know the quality he has, the delivery he can put it into the box. And playing in his more preferred role higher up the pitch this season as well. Right now, though, they're defending. Again, how many corners have we seen? Can't beat the first man, Jay O'Shea. He's frustrated with that. Aldridge dwelled on the ball too long. Carter doing the defending, Aldred doing the attacking. Opposite ends of the pitch, and Aldred giving chase again. How much defending did you do, Macca, in your playing days? Fair bit? Yeah, lots. Defend from the front. As we see Carlo Armiento probably been the best, if not one of the best players on the pitch in the first half. Not too much opportunity in the second, and he does look fatigued. And it's Jordan Courtney Perkins, the new recruit. He's back at Brisbane, having played it. Rakor Chestakova in Poland last season. Just the seven matches, though. So Courtney Perkins, who debuted for Brisbane as a 16-year-old for a years ago. On the left, Lurch to shoot through, and Knowles may get that opportunity. MacArthur defending, and O'Shea asking the questions. Now it's Hingit. Hingit trying a few little step-overs. He earns a corner. That was as good as Brisbane have looked in this second half. It just wouldn't fall for them, would they? A number of occasions, one, two, three touches, where it just the Carter defenders did just enough to block the shot. In the end, they have to be happy with a corner. Another one. The volume rises here at Suncorp Stadium. O'Shea. Neville sits here for Danzaki. Knowles, Truett, urged to shoot that time. He couldn't resist the temptation. It's a difficult one, that one. Stationary as the ball came to him. Hard to get the power. See, so just gets to come across his body, slices across it. Hingit returning it to Danzaki. Oh, what a touch, little back heel for Hingit. This should be a card, and is. As Toure got in a tangle with Jack Hingit. It was a lovely touch from Riku Danzaki. And with just 20 minutes to go in this Second half, another set piece for Brisbane. But they've been pretty good so far defending these kind of dead ball situations. MacArthur. O'Shea is the man trusted with the delivery. It's Courtney Perkins alongside. But it will be the delivery to Austin at the near post. Making the save, still the danger was present. Well, Charlie Austin, he scored with a near post header in the Australia Cup in Adelaide. He almost scored his first A-League men's goal in a similar vein. Well, it was a delicious ball in, wasn't it? And you see the run across the front post. Just gets the glancing header. Philip Curto gets his angles right, gets his body in the way. Brisbane making a double change. Mila Uzic and Brindle South. Brindle South was used a lot off the bench last season. Nikola Mila Uzic, he had some injury problems, restricted him to just 15 matches, but he scored five goals in that time. Jack Hingert, what a performance today from him. And O'Shea. It's too high for Mila Uzic. Courtney Perkins had the elbow up. Davila stays down. And it was a delayed decision. But Adam Kersey probably makes the right one based on what it seemed there from Courtney Perkins. It looked to be an elbow. He's just put his arm up to protect himself. It slides, I think, off the chest. It's the hand that slides off the chest and into the face. 
can't understand why the referee let play go on if he thought it was a foul, unless it was his assistant that gave him the heads up. tomorrow. Ten minutes remaining in the opening round. O'Shea oh, cleaned up late. Here is a problem for Aspropotamides. Latest to be shown a card. They get a set piece, Brisbane. The issue is they haven't been able to really create anything of note and they've had a litany of them in this match. Well, we know Jay O'Shea has the potential for some fantastic delivery. He hasn't quite been there tonight from set pieces. But this is a fantastic opportunity for someone to put their name up in lights on day two of the A-League season. Snatch all three points in front of this home crowd. O'Shea, it spills away to Noon, who reached the clearance away. Brindle South urge to just get it back into the mixer. He dwelled on position, possession. Davila came after him. Neville linking with Brindle South. Austin free in the middle. Another throw for Brisbane. One minute for Dwight York's team to defend here or potentially try and spring a counter-attack. Brindle South low to Aspropotamides. O'Shea on the volley. Struck the back of Aspropotamides. Austin looking for an option. He has Craig Noon on his back. O'Shea's pass, Miller, this will be back to Curto, Adam Kersey says, no back pass, the den they were up. It certainly didn't look intentional. It's a stalemate at Suncorp. In the opening round, both sides huffed and puffed. Brisbane with the half chances. MacArthur probably with the best of them, despite having less. But at full time, Brisbane's winless run on the opening day will extend to eight years. And the Bulls, the cup champs, they will turn their attention to Sunday's showdown at home with Adelaide United. Full-time in Brisbane, the raw nil, MacArthur nil.